welcome back to the State of the Nation show. And today I'm with Ambassador Esther Waringa. Esther Waringa is a recipient of uh, the UN Award for the Distinguished Woman African Leader. So uh, today we are discussing a non-elective form of government, the public service governance. And uh, as you heard from Esther, she rightly put it that we can do without elections. She's going to tell us about uh, more about that. So Esther, yes. how do, uh, what, are, what are the benefits that would reap from a public service governance system? Thank you very much. That's a very good question, Tony. The benefits that um, uh, we are going to get once we establish a public service system of government, allow me to start with the first benefit, that in every electoral process, we spend more than 100 billion in electoral process as a country. The just ended election, we spent more than 100 billion, including the presidential run. And uh, shortly after that, at the beginning of this year, our Honorable Minister for Finance, uh, Henry Rutich, said that the government is running through an economic belt meltdown because of the just ended elections. So number one, economic benefit. How are we going to achieve the economic benefit? Because we will no longer spend this money in electoral process. You can imagine how much money we spend in voter registration. How much do we spend in uh, the election day itself? From uh, employing the residing officers, the, the returning officers, the BVR kits that fail in the process in the middle of elections, and all communication equipment, the vehicles that the IBC hires, and consider how much each candidate spends on elections instead of using that money for benefit towards nation's development. Therefore, we spend a lot of money. So one, we are going to achieve economic liberation as the nation. Recently, I was uh, engaging the, some of the senior uh, government uh, officials in the National Treasury, and actually they gave a finger up that indeed this is a system that is going to address the wage bill because we are paying so much to the bloated electoral, uh, elected representatives. So once we eliminated, we eliminate the entirety of ele the entire elected representatives and the process that bats them thereof. So we are going to achieve what we call economic liberation. Number two, we are going to achieve sustainable peace. And this is my greatest dream. When I will sit one day and I find that we, didn't have, we don't have IDPs in the country as a result of electoral violence. Recently, His Excellency, the President and the Deputy were at the Hague because of electoral process. What is this that we cannot do away with it? When you have a cloth and it's grow old and it starts getting into tatters, you throw it away. Now, when our system is taking our leaders even to the Hague, that tells us even the system itself is totally in tatters. So, it will take Kenya another level in terms of good governance. Uh, uh, then, uh, we have been fighting through, I mean, after every five years, we go through serious electoral violence and every electoral period, there has to be a life taken away. There has to be death. I don't know what uh, this constitutes this. Therefore, we are going to be a country that is enjoying sustainable peace throughout the years. Why? Because we will not have a breakup of peace after every five years, we will not have campaigns. Just envisage such a nation. Envisage a nation where we will not have political parties, competition. Envisage a nation where we will not have people coming to campaign. Mimi diomzuri kuriko yure, mimi ntawarete idea notion paka, your doorstep. You know a lot of rise, a lot of, you know, we need to sober up as a nation. So those are some of the benefits that we are going to uh, realize in, uh, as a nation. And then we are going to be delivered out of the there's poverty, uh, poverty situation that we are in. I think most of our Kenyans right now are complaining because of the high, high, uh, high, 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 or, or yeah, high economic meltdown that we are experiencing. Look at sugar. How much are we buying? A country selling two sugar to more than two hundred. A country selling unga, that is a stable food of Kenya, more than a hundred shillings is too much. So when we eliminate the system and the budgets thereof. We are going to stabilize the nation and our GDP will be, will be high and will be achieved. So the bottom line, we will become one peaceful nation under God where only ministries of government throughout, we are not thinking about elections. Yakwamba, when I get to the market to Mamamboga, she's not talking about who will I elect this year, but she's talking about how much can I make my potato better 
to achieve maximum profit out of it. So we'll be a country that is thinking development 24-7. So those are some of the benefits that we are envisaging. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure with that, we, we'll be able to, to be a better country that, wow. uh, that glorifies the name of God 24-7. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. So maybe another question. Mm -hmm. How, in case we, in the instance that we adopt this system of governance, yes. how do you intend to roll it out to, to, the, na to, to the whole nation, yeah. to, the, to the ground level? Uh -huh. Allow me to share with you now how the PSG government will be structured. We will have the PSG CEO, that is, we call them the president, the PSG president, of course an unelected president, that is a CEO, based on merit and the capacity to deliver a public service government to Kenyans, then under him we shall have the 15 cabinet ministries at the national level. Why 15? I have corrupted so many ministries together because we again are not looking forward to another bloated 47, 50 ministries for the sake of rewarding. This time PSG is not talking about rewarding. Therefore, we will have only 15 ministries for effective delivery of services at the national level, headed by cabinet ministers. The 15 ministries again, at where the governor sit at the county level, we will not have the political offices. We will have the fifth, another 15 ministries of government headed by Kiabu County, Director of Water, uh, Migori County, Director of Education, uh, uh, Mombasa County, Director of Agriculture. So at the county level, we will not have cabinet ministers, we will have directors. At the constituency level, we are going again to devote the 15 ministries where we will have now the constituency director of education, constituency director of water and all that. And of course they will have their, uh, their operational secretariats to help them execute their ministerial mandate at any area of jurisdiction. Now, when we get to the world level, Kenyans, I want to remind you, we had extension officers. They used to come and give us free services from the government. I think I, I was happy uh, those days when I used to see a GK Suzuki car coming to my mother's ho her home and they would uh, inject our cow with whatever uh, uh, at a free cost because they had been sent by the government to take care of that. So where did these extension officers go? Including the agricultural extension officers, PSG government is going to resist them at the world level. Equally, they shall work with a team of about 7-7 seven, seven opinion readers, great brains at the village level, at the world level, to be able to tell us what problems are existing at the world. And once they develop these reports at the world, which school requires windows, which hospitals requires medicine at the world, which roads need to be done at the world, then they take that report to the constituency. The constituency said some, said some intelligence officers to confirm the situation on the ground. Then the report is passed on to the county. Then at the county level, it is uh, cleared and passed, and then it goes to the ministerial level, where the, minist the ministerial level, we will have given the ministries money from the treasury, from the national treasury. Then that money will be sent right to that particular ward, and the development is executed uh, adequately. So that is the new structure of government, and that's how it's going to be operationalized. Now, in that structure, you don't see an MCA. In that structure, you don't see any governor, you don't see any MPs. I salute you all, elected representatives, but what has a beginning has an end. It is time to say Kwaheri to elections and adopt public service governance without elections, where we need only ministries taking care of us. And then we become one peaceful nation and a god of all creation. When you say that it is time to say Kwaheri to elective uh, form of governance, yes. do you think that Kenya is ready? Oh, yes, to yesterday. Uh -huh. I attended a training of some uh, Kisi retired teachers and one teacher stood up and said, Madam Mester, why didn't you come before 207 to eight elections? Where were you? I told them there is time for everything. Then the same, same lady asked, are we able to achieve this before 2022 so that we don't have any other elections in Kenya? Let me tell you, Tony, all things are possible. When it's the will of God for the nation now to sober up, and you know, uh, Kenya has been said that it is a springboard of world revival. It cannot be a springboard of world revival when we are divided. The country must become one. 
we just have to become one so that God can reign in this nation so that we can be the light of the world. And I'm telling you, with the establishment of the most peaceful and God-fearing system in Kenya, even the, the, the demo other democracies that are melting off, they will come to Kenya to seek guidance from Kenya, including the most powerful nation of the United States of America. They will come to borrow this. For your information, this is the first country to establish public service system of government. It has never happened anywhere around the world. And most of the media guys ask me whether this was learned when I was at the University of Nairobi. No, no, no. I only did strategic management. This is a God-given ideology that indeed we can birth systems without election for the sake of sustainable peace and oneness. Wow. I have a question. Okay. Critics would say that uh, maybe you are doing this for personal gain uh, to, to, to get a, 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 an easier leeway mm -hmm. to the presidency. Mm -hmm. what, what, do, what do you respond to that? I think it's not about myself becoming the president. Mm -hmm. It's only that I have to offer leadership. Because if you just leave it, for example, I get out of this studio and forget about it and say those that have heard about public service governance, you carry on. They may not carry on because it's not in their heart. So it's not about me becoming the president, but the issue is I need to offer leadership. So uh, once I offer leadership, and probably there is a team that can carry on with the public service system of government, I have no problem. I will go to other nations and help them set the public service system of government. So let us, as much as we are critiquing, let us look it from a positive mindset. When we look it from a positive mindset, we will all agree that we need somebody, the vision carrier, to lead this nation towards that, uh, that direction. And when it is fully realized in Kenya, of course I will have no business being at the top. Somebody else can come and take over the leadership and we can move on to other nations to assist them develop the same. So have you thought maybe how many years would a president in the PSG government need to take in president? Yes, I think uh, between from the from the day we uh, from the day we adopt and embrace PSG government within a period of seven years, I think we would have fully established the systems, learning, and of course uh, even other nations already buying into our idea because everything will ra be running efficiently and effecti effectively. So I believe within a period of seven years it must have been set. Also within a period of seven years we should be able to know of course who takes over what and uh, the the necessary registrative measures to be taken and all that yeah so when you talk about seven years you also uh, you're also talking about even the ministerial cabinet position aha uh -huh. thank you very much um that could be different uh i think when a cabinet minister delivers I think we have no reason why that cabinet minister should not be given a chance, another chance probably to be able to carry on for another period. But because we have so many unemployed Kenyans, maybe it would apply also that after seven years they can still give a chance to another cabinet minister and they can be able to do something else. Yeah. So have you presented this uh, proposition to the government of Kenya? Yes, we are in the process of engaging, and I said that recently we had uh, poverty eradication uh, celebrations there at Embu, when, uh, where I was one of the key guest speakers, and I shared with the key government officials who were there, and as a result of that, my speech was circulating all over in the media and with that I happened to as a result of that I was requested by senior officials in the Ministry of Planning to submit my speech towards public service governance establishment because they feel number one is going to work towards poverty education number two it's going to reduce on the budgets that as the national treasury is uh, giving towards the electoral process so kind of some of the government officials are getting it and I request can we take this positively let us not keep on clinging on something that that has started something that is already not giving us solution because the worst thing to a human being um, is not to embrace change when the time comes for change we always say no change no progress so let us look at from a positive perspective and to his excellency I've been trying to look for you and I know uh, recently I sat with your chief of advisor on sustainable peace and we agreed that uh, we agreed that you should listen, give an ear to establishment of public service governance, and you will be the first president to, and to leave a mark in this country in terms of sustainable peace. Because if you transit Kenya from uh, an elective government to a non-elective government through public service governance, this will be the best legacy for our president. He will be seated five or ten years down the line, wherever he will be seated, and he will be enjoying the system that he uh, he birthed 
in the Republic of Kenya through taking us through the transition process. Yes. Wow. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Thank you for having time for us. Thank you too much. Wow. Mm -hmm. They say that change is inevitable. Yes. If you don't change, change will change you. That is according to Ann Esther. She says that it's time we, we do away with the elective uh, form of governance and we adopt this new system of governance, the public service governance. What do you think about that? Keep your comments coming in. We are on social media. We are on Twitter. That is Champions TV Kenya, Facebook, Champions TV Kenya. We are also uh, on our SMS line. You can get us. That is 0706 100 100. Keep your comments coming in. I would want to know what uh, your thoughts are and we will have Esther back uh, to tell us more about the public service governance system. So I have been your host. My name is Tony Waweru. This is the State of the Nation show. Keep watching.